Good morning, everybody. I'm Senator Patrick Gallivan. I represent the 59th district, which includes the city and town in Canandaigua in southern Ontario County and then heads east and cuts across Livingston, Wyoming, and Erie County, ending at the lake. So I'm coast to coast, Canandaigua Lake <laughs> out to Lake Erie. Uh, but I would like to welcome everybody this morning to this hearing. Welcome Senator Mark Grisanti, who is the chairman of the State Senate Environmental Conservation Committee, uh, to discuss uh, clearly uh, what is among the issues of our times. We're in the heart of the Finger Lakes, and the constituents, my constituents, has, have raised time and time again their concerns about hydrofracking as it relates to the Finger Lakes and the water supply. So that's among the things that we're here today to focus on. And I'd like to thank Senator Grisanti for agreeing to come out here to talk about this, which of course affects more than just uh, than what we're facing here in the Finger Lakes, but statewide. And, and Senator Grisanti has been traveling the state with different meetings, different hearings, in an attempt to gather as much information as possible so that we then can ultimately go forward and, and do our jobs. But with that, uh, I thank you again. Uh, I appreciate the fact that people took time out of their day to attend it today, and I appreciate Senator Grisani's work and his willingness to come here and focus on the issue of water, and I'd like to turn it over to him. Okay, um, thank you. Again, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for the introduction, uh, Senator Gallivan. I want to thank all those who are going to be testifying today and all those who are in attendance today. And, and if there was some miscommunication out there as far as how this hearing was going to be conducted, what we had is we had people that were submitting uh, their testimony uh, prior to the hearing. It's, uh, in a sense, uh, not a hearing as it was normally done by the DEC where many, many people would testify. They would get a whole two to three minutes. Um, this is a hearing that's going to be very specific. As you know, hydraulic fracturing represents the most important either economic development opportunity in the state, but also most important environmental concerns uh, to possibly ever face this state. So as chairman of the Senate uh, Committee on Environmental Conservation, I've been asked with the responsibility along with Senator Gallivan to scrutinize uh, uh, this particular practice. And since the SGIS report, uh, it's been reviewed by many individuals, including most of you here. And during this year, I've told groups on both sides of this issue that I would look at every issue that we have, uh, listen to all the testimony uh, as it relates to fracking, and make a case-by-case uh, case determination. But this hearing today is narrowly focused. Uh, the, the prior hearings that have been across the state have been very broad. This hearing is specifically focusing on the byproducts of hydraulic fracturing and specifically the wastewater and cuttings. So that's, that's what this hearing is limited to. Uh, there have been hearings held by the DEC, the Assembly, many uh, local governments, county governments across the state. But until today, as I said, those hearings have been a little bit broad. Uh, and our goal here today, myself and Senator Gallivan, is to just have a little bit more focus on, on uh, some of the issues. So I'm hopeful that the experts here today and the people that are testifying will help educate us uh, with their experience. And for those of you that do want to submit uh, uh, comments still, uh, it has been extended by the DEC from December 12th, which today was going to be the cutoff date to January 11th. So that is still going to go forward. Also, I'll remind you if anybody is here in, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're at the end on the lake, uh, Canada, well, there are there is a restaurant here for those of you that want to either get coffee or snacks or something like that that is open. Um, but with that said, uh, we'll move forward. And the first to uh, come and testify here today is we have from the DEC, uh, Deputy Commissioner Eugene Leff, uh, and I would ask you to, to approach here and, and uh, begin your comments. Okay. Gene, before you get started, I, res I um, no, I'm good. I got handed to me, there was uh, another senator, as you know, we left this open, there was gonna be we sent it out to all 62 senators to come here and, uh, and listen to the testimonies. You can see you got myself and Pat here. Uh, we got a response from a lot of senators that weren't able to make it. One of them in particular was Senator Avella, who uh, asked me to read this statement into the, uh, the record, and I will do so at this time. He basically thanks myself and Senator Gallivan for scheduling this very important public hearing 
to discuss the wastewater issues involved in hydraulic fracturing. It is crucial that public hearings such as this are held and people are given an opportunity to engage in detailed discussions on the appropriateness of allowing what is very controversial and potentially devastating form of extracting natural gas. I regret that I am unable to attend today's hearing. However, I urge Senator Grisani to continue this public hearing process regarding hydrofracking and respect, respectfully ask that an additional hearing uh, be scheduled in Albany uh, when the legislative session resumes in January 2012 so we can expand this discussion and invite additional speakers. Uh, he goes on to state Senator Vella that while I will review the statements of those invited to speak today with an open mind, he has serious reservations regarding an overall safety of this form of extraction of natural gas reserves. As many of you, I have spent countless hours researching the issue and have willingly met with advocates on both sides of the issue, including industry supporters. However, after long deliberation, he says he believes that the dangers of this injury may be too great and the risk to human health and a vital water resource far outweigh the proposed economic benefits, which are temporary and certainly not guaranteed. He's especially concerned about the health and environmental risks posed by the disposal and processing of hydraulic fracking fluids and drill cuttings. I have come to learn that despite the current moratorium on hydrofracking in New York, the state currently allows hydrofracking waste products, including drill cuttings, pulverized rock, and drilling fluid to be dumped in our landfills, spread on our fields and roads, and treated in waste treatment facilities that may not necessarily be equipped to properly treat such materials. Much of this hydrofracking waste includes low-level radioactive waste such as RA-226, which is known carcinogen and is especially dangerous if inhaled and ingested. It is not a stretch of the imagination to see these waste products could very easily find their way into local groundwater, directly exposing people by ingestion of the water or by inhaling dust that comes from the local landfills or from roads and fields where it has been spread. He states a significant amount of this hydrofracking waste is being imported from outside New York, primarily from our neighboring Pennsylvania. Trucks cross New York state borders on a daily basis, carrying this highly dangerous waste into our state, even while we deliberate whether to allow this practice to occur within our own borders. We have already put many of our citizens, he feels, at risk. I am in the process of amending my hydrofracking legislation, Senate Bill 4220, to prohibit the acceptance, disposal, and processing of fluid, including drill cuttings, used in hydraulic fracturing processes. I am also the sponsor of legislation S4616. Senator Vella goes on to stay, which will remove the current exemption from hazardous waste classification, giving to drilling fluids, produce waters, and other waste associated with the exploitation, development, or production of crude oil, natural gas, or geothermal energy. He finds no reason why waste products from oil and natural gas activities that meet the definition of hazardous waste should not be subject to the same laws regarding generation, transportation, treatment, storage, and disposal as other hazardous waste products. The risk of catastrophic danger to the environment, the health of New York State residents, and adverse economic impacts as a result of hydraulic fracturing far outweigh the potential for job creation and promotion of natural gas alternatively to oil. Respectfully submitted, uh, read into the record today, 12-12-2011, Tony Avella, 11th Senatorial District. Now with that said, well, We'll, uh, we'll move forward from there. And one thing I want to, uh, to, to remind everybody of, and this is something that I, myself and Senator Gallivan, we talked about, uh, while somebody's testifying or even after the testimony, I really don't want to get into uh, either people booing or, or, or clapping or, or, or one side or the other. We want to conduct this hearing uh, in a fair manner uh, to all those that are going to be speaking, to all those that are going to give testimony. And uh, I've, I was at some of the hearings in the past. I was present at some of the hearings that they had in, in, uh, in Albany. And, and to be honest with you, I find it quite distasteful when, when somebody just, you know, out of the blue either yells or, or, or uh, uh, says certain things. Because if, if it happens and it gets out of hand, I'm going to ask that you leave the, uh, the hearing room so we can move forward with the people that we have that are going to be testifying here today, both pro and uh, uh, against uh, uh, this practice, okay? 